um, for number 32, they want us to find, to set up the integral that revolves the area between these curves about the, lo the line that's, that they tell us. Um, so because we're allowed to use a calculator, I've gone ahead and I've put these curves in a graphing calculator. So we have our cosine squared of x, right, which is our red curve, uh, y is equal to zero. So we can see that the area between them is this section here that I'm going to draw in yellow. And then it goes, it tells us from x is equal to negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So I've put in those boundaries as well in, um, in green and then in purple. So this is our area. And first, they want us to revolve it about the x-axis. So uh, about this x-axis, right? So um, they want us to revolve it about. So, so when we revolve it about the x-axis, what we're going to have is a, a bunch of, uh, of rings, like so, that get bigger here. And then, not rings, rather, but plates. Uh, I have drawn this quite terribly. But they get smaller like here, and then smaller, and smaller, and so on. And the idea is that it's going to create this kind of volume, right? Um, so this one's pretty easy for us because we're just summing up these plates. We're summing them horizontally from negative pi over 2, which is where one of our boundary goes, all the way from to positive pi over 2, right? So we're summing them up for um, 32a. We're summing them up across the x-axis from negative pi over 2 to, um, to pi over 2. And now we just have to find the area of these, uh, of these circles, right? Well, that one's pretty easy because the area is basically, the area of any circle is pi r squared. Um, and in this case, the radius just goes from the origin all the way to where it touches the curve, right? So the radius is actually just the value of the curve at x, cosine squared x. That's the, the value. Um, so we, as we can see, at any point, the radius just ends at wherever cosine squared x, what, wherever that value is. Uh, so basically, our area is pi times cosine squared x squared, right? So that gives us, uh, let's see, pi times cosine squared x squared. So that gives us pi times cosine to the power 4 of x dx. Um, so that's it. That's our first integral when we revolve it about the x-axis. And now it tells us to calculate it um, using plugging into a calculator that lets you integrate. Uh, I'm using on I'm using the calculator uh, called Symbolab. I recommend it. Um, so when I plug this in into Symbolab, let's see what I let's see what I get. Um, so this is going to give us roughly once to five decimal points. 3.70110. All right, we're done with the first part. Now let's talk about the second part. So the second part, they want us to take this, and now they want us to revolve this area uh, about the line y is equal to 1. So once more, we're going to have the same area. Let me color that in. But now, instead of revolving about the x-axis, we're revolving it about this line here. This is our line, uh, y is equal to 1, and then we're doing, we're doing this. Um, okay, so when we do this, now we have to think about what this uh, revolution actually looks like, right? And instead of having a, uh, a circle, now we're going to have a bunch of disks because... Well, there's a bunch of empty space here that when we revolve it doesn't give us any volume, right? Because there's nothing there. So actually what's going to happen is uh, we're going to have the first boundary that's going to meet. It's this line as at y is equal to cosine squared. And then the second line, the second boundary where the volume ends, right? It's going to be at the x-axis. So actually it's going to give us this where... It has, um, all of this has an area, right? Because it's the, the thickness between the curve and the x-axis, which we're revolving. Um, and then in the small circle, it's just empty space. So we have to think about how we're calculating this. And, and so to calculate it, we basically just take the biggest radius, right? And that's going to give us a circle. And then we subtract from it a circle that has the smallest radius. So when we subtract it like this, it's going to give us this ring shaped which is thing, which is what we have, right? So this is going to give us, um, to, to get this, we have our 1, 
radius one and then r two and basically our area this guy here this ring is a one minus a two so it's the area of the biggest radius minus the area of the smallest radius um so now let's think about how we're going to get this right the value of this radius um if we're thinking of a one the biggest radius that's very easy because it basically just goes from this line all the way down to the x-axis right no matter where we're going um because the x-axis is the end of our boundary so uh in this interval the biggest radius is always going to be one that doesn't change um so oops that is not what i meant to do so the biggest radius it doesn't change right let me just undo this okay um so if it doesn't change for us we get to just oops let me just adjust this okay um, for this one, a1 is just pi, and this distance here from 1 to 0 is just 1, so pi r squared. And then a2, let's think about what a2 is. Well, a2 is the distance from this line all the way out here. Uh, now, notice that this is not the height of the function, right? Because actually, the height of the function is measured from 0 all the way up here. So, absolutely not the height of the function. Um, so what can we say, right, that the green line, the green arrow, plus the orange yeah, uh, line is equal to 1? Or we can say that the orange line is just basically 1, 1, which is this blue line that goes all the way here, 1, minus the orange, sorry, minus the green. Um, so once more, we want the smallest radius, which is the orange line, which is not the height of the function, which is not the height of cosine squared, right? Um, so we basically have to subtract the height of cosine squared from 1 to get that little orange bit. So the radius is going to be um, 1 minus, and then the height of the function is just cosine squared x, right? So cosine squared x and then to the power of 4. So um, when we expand this, let's expand, uh, let's expand a2, which is equal to, that is cosine 4x and then minus... 2 cosine squared x and then plus 1. Therefore, a1 minus a2 is pi. Oops, I forgot to put a pi here. And I put a 4 for there for some reason. Yeah, because it's pi r squared, right? So a1 minus a2 is going to be pi times a1, so 1 minus this whole thing. So minus cosine 4x minus minus is plus cosine squared x and then uh, minus 1, right? So to simplify this, we have that, um, therefore, which I'm going to put here, a1 minus a2, 1 minus 1, it cancels out, is just pi times um, minus cosine to the fourth of x plus 2 cosine squared x, right? So we're ready to set up our integral. Um, this integral, once more, we're summing up these horizontal disks from negative pi over 2 all the way to positive pi over 2. So once more from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And then it's the integral of pi times um, negative cosine to the power of 4x plus 2 cosine squared x and all of this dx, okay? So um, now we get to... Plug this into our calculator to see the value. I am using Symbol Lab once more, so uh, when I plug this in, let's see. Um, that will actually have to put the approximate symbol because we're rounding. So that is approximately 6.16850. All right, and we have uh, found the volume when we revolve it about this line.